here we are. A2L refrigerants are now being introduced to the market and we're going to see them more and more as 410A gets phased out here in the USA. And I want to do a real quick video on what exactly is A2L refrigerants? What should you be concerned about? Should you be concerned about anything? And we're going to talk about some of the issues about the flammability, how easy they can ignite in your home, and why are we even introducing these to our homes? And so first of all, during the making of this video, 410A refrigerant is being phased out here in the US and we're going to start seeing more refrigerants being introduced to the market and the two main ones that we're seeing are R32, so not R22, that we used back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, not R22, but R32 and then the second one is R454B and you might ask why are we looking at two refrigerants versus just one like the past? Part of the reason is some of the manufacturers are fighting for their refrigerant. So whether they own it or they don't own it and they want to use this other one for one reason or another, I think that's part of the reason here. And ultimately, we may see a time here in the future where one or the other has to be chosen. Whether the manufacturers like it or not, you know how politicians are or the EPA or whoever steps in, we may see a point where they say, no, we're not having two or more refrigerants. We're going to stick to this one that all products will have to offer. I don't know if that'll happen because even today, Today we have tons of different drop-in or replacement refrigerants for systems. They might have been manufactured for this refrigerant and then they have these replacements for them. So that's just something to consider as well. I could probably keep you here all day talking about all the different types of refrigerants. I'm not a chemist, just a heating and air guy, but ultimately a lot of refrigerants are broken down into different categories. So we have HCs, FCs, HCFCs, CFCs, all these different types of refrigerants talking about the different additives that are in that refrigerant, like fluorocarbons or hydrocarbons. In addition to that, some of them have other additives or they're based on different types of chemicals. Some of them even have propane, methane, and even chlorine in them. But aside from all of that, aside from the chemistry side of things, aside from the different types of chemicals that are in the refrigerant itself, whether it's a mix or not, and all those different things, a lot of refrigerants are broken down into a category based on how flammable they are and how toxic they are. And so a lot of them will have a number attached. So you'll see refrigerants that are A3 refrigerants, for example, or an A1 refrigerant. The higher that number is, the more flammable it is. So whether it's one, two, or three, threes are highly flammable, ones are not flammable or barely flammable. 410 that we're used to having in our homes is one of those A1 refrigerants. In factories, a lot of air conditioning units use ammonia and it is a class two refrigerant. The difference between the A2Ls that we're talking about, that we're gonna talk about, and ammonia is a B2L refrigerant. Because it has that B instead of an A, it's a higher toxicity. It's not good for your home, it's highly toxic. And so the main question becomes, and this is the question I asked that you might be asking, why are we looking at, at a more flammable refrigerant? Why are we looking at an A2L refrigerant? And the main reason is, in addition to all these different categories and things we've talked about, refrigerants have something called a GWP that is attached to that refrigerant. So once they come up with the chemistry and the, the makeup of it and mix it together, they decide what is the GWP. And GWP is the global warming potential. And that's what this is all about. And we used to have systems years and years and years ago with R12, and then they went to R134, and a lot of refrigeration still uses that. And then of course we had R22 that then switched to 410, and now is switching to these refrigerants. And it's all about the GWP. So the lower that number, the lower the GWP, the better it is for the environment. And so that was the craziest thing. So when they first switched from R22 to 410, and then they were like, well, you know, we're gonna have to get rid of 410 now. It's not good for the environment either. A lot of us in the industry were like, what, why, you know, what are we doing here? Why, why are we doing this? And I will say that it makes you wonder in the future, as time goes on and things are figured out or chemistry or whatever, it makes you wonder if we're gonna see these new refrigerants that during the making of this video are now being introduced to the market. It makes you wonder if there will come a day where they're all phased out. So I think we can all probably 
assess that it's probably more about money, but that's a whole nother topic. So again, R32 and R454B are both A2L refrigerants. They have a level two instead of the A1s. And you might be saying, well, I don't want flammable in my home. I don't, I don't want to go to something that is mildly flammable. That's the verbiage they use, that they're, they're not highly flammable, they're mildly flammable. And that brings me to why I wanted to do this video. I think the main thing that I just want to say is, first of all, they are only mildly flammable. There has to be a super concentration of the refrigerant and the right amount of air and the right amount of heat source to ignite this refrigerant. And the other thing I'll say is we're being told that a lot of these systems that are going to be coming out will actually contain less refrigerant in them. So as we start to look at SEER 2 is now becoming a thing instead of SEER, and now we're starting to see these systems come out with this R32 or 454, the idea is there's going to be less refrigerant in them, so there's less fuel there. So unlike, say, a home that has natural gas or propane that is heating a furnace or a water heater or whatever it's heating and you having a almost unlimited amount of gas that can be lit on fire, there is a finite amount of this refrigerant that's gonna be in your heating and air system. So let's just say absolute craziest situation. There was a situation that there wasn't the perfect storm of everything coming together and igniting this refrigerant. There's not but so much refrigerant in there to burn, if that makes Makes sense. Now, you might say, well, once that happens, it's now lit the house on fire. So what the heck? What are we talking about here? And I think that's a valid point. I hear that. But I think the other thing that I would just say is we see homes all across America that do have natural gas, that do have propane, that do have fire burning appliances, and they're okay. So I think that as long as you have a professional in there doing the work and not some handyman or some brother-in-law that's done heating and air a few times, as long as you have someone that's qualified to do what they're they're supposed to be doing that you should never have an issue and at least that's the hope right so anyway let me know your thoughts let me know are you okay with these mildly flammable refrigerants coming into your home where before it wasn't flammable at all comment down below i'd love to hear your thoughts thanks for watching hit that subscribe button we'll see you next time